Okay, Performers Food Group, BFGC on New York Stock Exchange is the winner of our contest today as in the worst performer in our model portfolios. And that's how we chose how to do this one. Um, you know, it, it's not easy to decide which one to look at uh, for the day because uh, we can't do them all. Um, and you go with a hot one or you go with one that's beaten up or there's an event and all those things uh, are possible. Uh, today I just let fate decide and I said uh, it's a down day. Let's see which is the worst performer is in our portfolios and we'll do a little video on that one. And it happens to be Performance Food Group. So congratulations. Um, technically it's actually our second worst. Our first worst is Boeing, but I just did a video on Boeing. So I went to the next one is Performance Food Group. It's about down about nine and a half today. Uh, market's uh, not having a good day. so. It's not surprising, and I prefer to buy a stock on a down, uh, like a down market day, as opposed to a down day for that specific stock. Because that usually means there's bad news specifically for that stock, and something went wrong, and then it's actually much harder to figure out uh, if it's a buy or not. So in in this case, I I think it's uh, I think it's an opportunity. Uh, the downside, you know, just looking for that pullback. We're getting it, and I, and I think you can can step in here. Um, there's going to be some volatility, and it could definitely go lower. Um, I'm not calling a bottom, but I think you can step in here. And we're going to take you through the reasons why. So first thing, I think, let's just go with the stock chart and take a look at that. And here we have the uh, Yahoo stock chart. And pre-COVID, sailing along there, uh, trading in the low 50s. So... Looked like it peaked out at 53.99, and you know was in that area in the low 50s for a while. And it's a good company. We really like this company. Um, and then COVID, wow, did it ever take a beating? Uh, went down to 11 dollars. So I'm sure you've heard lots of stocks took a haircut, um, but 53 to 11 is definitely one of the bigger ones. And in fairness, I can see why. Um, they provide food to restaurants. That's their number one business and restaurants were shutting down. So I can see it. I get it. it makes sense. Uh, I was a little worried myself and if this had continued even longer who knows where this could have went. However, we are getting back to work. Restaurants are slowly opening up. They're all doing delivery at least or most of them and you know it's not completely dead. Now it's not Vibrant, but it's not completely dead. And then here, here you see the the trading on it, and it bounced back up to uh, I guess it's 28, and back down to 21. So 28 to 21 is the new range, and I think that's, I think you're going to keep seeing that. Uh, hit it 32 just a couple of days ago, back down to 25. Um, I'd say you know definitely if we can get at 21 again, I'd say for sure. So just on a, on a trading. Uh, perspective there and you know everyone knows we're not traders we're looking for good high quality companies at a decent valuation okay next thing I want to show is their company slides here so, uh, this is a presentation uh, go have a look at it if you can um, I want to bring this up for people this is gonna I hope this works well if I just blow it up can you see it oh okay that worked great um, Okay, so they have this performance food services and this Vistar. Um, the performance food services, what we just described, the, the restaurant business, and that is most of their business. Food services says 68% uh, of sales and 70% and of EBITDA. And then this Vistar is more like uh, vending machines and single, single purchases. Like in a theater, you go up to the counter and you just buy a couple chocolate bars. Uh, so there, this is vending, office, coffee distribution, theaters, retail impulse, hospitality, college bookstores, convenience, and corrections. Funny enough, I am watching uh, Orange is the New Black on uh, Netflix, and they talk about the corrections commissary all the time. Okay, next slide. Um, this is speci specifically with the, the food services. Um, Independent restaurants, 34%, chains, 66 
Uh, I don't need to get too deep into that one. Uh, Vistar, this is the one I wanted to look into a little bit more. Um, the cus customer mix. Vending, so vending machines. Convenience store, 17%. Theater, 15 And then uh, so forth and so on. Uh, on down the line. Uh, product mix, beverages, candy, snacks, all that. Uh, and so I guess the key thing is vending, convenience stores, and theaters are the next kind of segments that we want to keep in mind. Uh, they also have this EB Brown, but to me that's convenience stores, and that's why I think they didn't break that out separately in this slide here because this star is convenience stores, so it's probably one and the same. Okay, so the business, bottom line is this, the business 70% is restaurants, 30% is other, okay? I think it's important because restaurants are gonna be hurting, although they're, they're getting back to work, so it's not a complete disaster. Convenience stores, I don't think, hardly change. I do think, let's go back to this, uh, vending's probably pretty reasonable, probably a little bit of hurt there. Convenience stores, I don't think, change much. Theater, yes, although those are opening up as well. So, you know, I, I want to keep that in mind that it, it's not going to, it's not just restaurants where, you know, that's just going to be a very difficult business, especially this next year. All right, last but not least, we want to look at our valuation model, of course. And here we go. So, interesting history. By the way, this company started serving back in 1855, I believe it was. 1855 was the roots of this company so very good returns uh, came down in the recession 08 09 pop back up uh, uh, kind of weird that it would pop up that high probably some one-time accounting things that we didn't quite root out here but really the business is earning about a 12% they did make an acquisition that's why you see a spike in the capital and then a bit of a lag in the returns but I think overall you can just say hey look this is a 10 or 12% business and pretty consistent uh, 5 to 10% growth in the top line. I mean, that, that, that is the business. Not this year. It's going to get hurt. That's fine. But let's model it as though it's going to be a 10% business uh, in five years. And all of a sudden, you see a $44 stock. And let's see if it's 12 which would be amazing. It's a $54 stock. Remember, said it traded as high as uh, 53 99 that's why people said it's a 12 percent business and by the way i still think it's 12 percent business i do think it takes time to get back to the 12 percent business much like we're showing here in fact you know if i were to do it slightly differently i'd probably do something like this it's going to be a four percent business this year and it's going to grow to 12 but those few years of of lean tough times only took off three dollars a share right like if it's you got to understand that investing is long term. I think we say it over and over and over, and we're broken record about it. But this is what you got. This is how you got to think. That's how stocks are are priced, priced on future cash flows, all future cash flows, literally all of them. If you could model them out to the end of time. Now, thankfully, to the time value of money, what you earn twenty and thirty years down the road has a very low time value of money, even if it's a high dollar amount. Anyways, long story short, if it's a $12 business, this stock is still worth $50 or a little bit more. And it's trading at $25. Is this going to be volatile? Absolutely. It's one of the most volatile uh, we got going right now because of the uncertainty in the short term. Um, and this prior to this was not a volatile stock at all. It's just, oh, I'm delivering food to, to restaurants. It's a good, stable business. I you know all of a sudden it becomes a different animal in this environment so it will get hit on um, days that you know we have a, a big rise in covid cases the fed outlook was terrible it, you know I, I literally picked the worst performer in the portfolio and um i can see this being the best perf performer you know a week from now and then it'll be the worst performer again because of the nature of the uncertainty uh on how well this back to work is going to go. So there's Performance Food Group, PFGC, New York Stock Exchange. 
Thanks for watching our investment video. If you want to improve your portfolio returns, simply subscribe. Or if you're an investment advisor or a retail investor and you want help with your portfolio more directly, we can help you with a managed account and manage each and every trade for you.